Excellent evening, everyone. We are all welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are we? Midweek pass. How are we doing? <laughs> oh, wow. The month is just flying and coming to an end, though. <laughs> Some people will say that time is not waiting for anybody. He's just minding his business. You too, you should mind your business. Excellent evening to every one of us. We are all welcome to this evening's broadcast welcome 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 if you're online kindly you know say good evening so i can welcome you as i also share this on my pages aging with grace we are here again today to look at stress ulcers stress ulcer what they are the causes the symptoms the remedies the prevention so we're all welcome, welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome. As I share this, kindly also share on your pages. And when you say good evening, I welcome you to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome. What's happening to this? So we're all welcome to this evening's broadcast. As we look at stress also, who is online? Uh, my stay online today today i hope the network is okay where is the MTN? welcome welcome to every one of us i seem not to see okay i can see six people online but i've not seen any name well welcome 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 if you join me please greet so i can greet you back Welcome, welcome. Wow, we have up to 10 people. I'm not seeing them on my laptop. Welcome, everyone, to this evening's broadcast as we look at stress ulcers. Excellent evening to every one of us. I, we, are, we are up to 12. Who, who is online? Let me see. I've not seen any greetings. That's unlike my first now. Thumbs up. But video is being interrupted. Okay, yeah. Grace, you're welcome. Welcome, Esther. You're welcome to this evening's broadcast. We're having a little challenge with our, um, our own um, network. But I'm sure we'll... We'll take it through today. I just pray um, it behaves itself. Welcome, welcome. You need to be near to be sure this thing behaves itself. Today we are looking at stress ulcer, the remedies, what it is, the causes, prevention, and things like that. That's what we are looking at this evening. Hello, Okweyemi. You're welcome. Hey, welcome. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome. We're having um, like a small challenge with um, network, but I think um, it's beginning to behave itself. <laughs> it's beginning to behave itself, small, small. Low. So I think we can get going this morning. I mean, this evening, if it can just behave itself a little more better, a little more better. Trying to share on the last page. All right. Okay. That's out of the way. So we'll just um, go through this evening's broadcast, which is stress. Stress ulcers, the causes, the symptoms, prevention, and remedies. Hello, Payemi. You're welcome. Welcome, Gaba. Welcome, Ifi. How are you? Welcome, Destiny, Jen Destiny. Welcome, Ngozi Mekwe. Welcome, Udeme Madu. You're all welcome to this evening's broadcast. We had a slight delay, maybe like a three, five minutes delay. You know, today we are looking at stress ulcer, the causes, the symptoms, the prevention, the remedies, and some fast, you know, ways you can know about them. You know, for some people, changes in the secretion of acids and mucus protecting the stomach tissue, you know, from the acid may also lead to some kind of erosion in the tissue over time you know and this condition is actually what we call gastric ulcer you know and um, when we talk about stress ulcer is a type of ulcer that is you know believed to be triggered by physical stress i'm going to be explaining what the physical stress is as we go on well, hello ijeduru you're welcome to this evening's broadcast 
we are looking at stress ulcer. You know, a stress ulcer actually causes um, sores in the upper gastrointestinal tract. And these sores damage the gastrointestinal lining, you know, and then it will not cause pain. And then you will also have a feeling of burning as well as an increased risk of infection. That's even one of the things that actually makes these um, ulcers, well, many types of ulcer, very bad because of the infection. So when one is having ulcer, it's very, very important that you are out of infection, especially wherever it is, that you make sure you're taking enough, you know, foods and supplements that can keep you away from further or what we call secondary infection. You know, the damage could range from minor irritation to actual severe bleeding. Hello, Regina Amada. Kandu, you're welcome to this evening's broadcast. This evening we are looking at stress ulcer, the causes, the symptoms, the remedies, the prevention, and you know, things all about it. You know, some research actually showed that stress, you know, can be a direct cause of ulcer. Uh, but current research has also shown that the experience of psychological stress can also influence health risk behaviors. When one is going through not just physical stress, not just medical stress, you know, there are kinds of medical physical stress. Let me put it that way. Because when we talk about physical stress, a lot of people think it's carrying a bag of cement or, you know, running or doing things that has to do with the movement of the arms. When we talk about physical stress, sometimes we are talking about some kind of medical physical stress that we're going to be looking at later. But then research is also going very deep on psychological stress. And that's why a number of times I talk about what is eating you, not just what you're eating. And I pray for you today and I pray for myself that we will be in peace. We will be at rest and the joy of the Lord will be our strength in the name of Jesus. You know, sometimes we need to take life easy. My husband will always say, uh, you know, we're taking life easy. <laughs> sometimes a lot of us, we are in so much a hurry to make it. We are in so much a hurry to meet up. We're so much in a hurry to make ends meet. And so we are actually destroying ourselves. In fact, there's this saying I had during the week, I think from my husband, that some people spend a lot of money to make wealth. And then they spend a lot of wealth to get health after they have made that money. That shouldn't be your portion. And that's why you need to take care of yourself very well from now. Speak to your body. Let your body speak to you and do what you're supposed to do. You know, so... These behaviors in themselves, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, some research already shows that stress is directly, in, in, you know, um, related to some causes of ulcer. And the current research also have also shown that the experience of psychological stress influences health risk behaviors. Some psychological stress influences health risk behaviors. And these behaviors in themselves place such people at a higher risk of developing an ulcer and also things like including smoking, lack of sleep, and the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin and ibuprofen, as we'll find out later. All right, so Florence, you're welcome. Welcome, Ngozi. You're welcome to this evening's broadcast. All right, so, you know, there is also an ongoing research into how stress interacts with our bodies, our body's immune system, which can also influence and affect healing because it's been found out that when people are you know really stressed up and unhappy their immune system also drops you know so the type of ulcer that is normally referred to as stress ulcer is believed to be triggered by physical stress it's actually believed to be triggered by physical stress so i've tried to explain gastric ulcer gastrointestinal ulcer ulcers like last week or so we treated ulcer of the eye and i tried to you know explain the causes and what you can also do to prevent that that's the cornell ulcer so you can go down my page and watch you know that video and um see if you have anyone going through it what the person can actually do to avoid that now we are going to look at some of the causes of stress ulcer what is it that makes stress ulcer to come on to some people Stress ulcers can actually occur suddenly due to physiological stress. It can occur suddenly due to some kind of physiological stress. You know, a stress ulcer is not the same as a peptic ulcer. 
you know, that is made worse by stress. The peptic ulcer is made worse by stress. You know, both actually would cause sore in the lining of the stomach and the intestine. Both peptic ulcer, stress ulcer, they can all cause sores in the lining of the stomach and the intestine. The typical peptic ulcer, you know, sometimes it's called um, stomach ulcer. It actually emerges gradually. You know, as drug or infections weaken the gastrointestinal lining, you know, it will just be coming out. Like if one is taking, um, if one is um, having some kind of pain or some kind of other diseases and the person is taking a lot of aspirin, ibuprofen, those non-steroidal, you know, um, pain relief medicine, it will gradually be eroding the lining of the stomach. It will gradually be eroding the lining of the intestine. And so as he's doing it gradually, then one will now begin to have all those um, gastrointestinal ulcer and um, peptic ulcer. But stress ulcer occurs suddenly. It's like a sudden stress. And it's usually because of physiological stress. I'm going to be describing in detail very soon for us. It's usually because of physiological stress. Hello, Aluchi Ejaka. Oh, Oluchi is watching for the first time. Good evening, Oluchi. Thank you for joining us for the first time. Please, can we welcome Oluchi Ejiaka to Aging with Grace live broadcast. It's an interactive session where we look at ourselves and our bodies. Like I always say, I am an alternative nutritionist. I teach you how you stay away from hospital using natural things and remedies you can find around you so you're welcome Oluchi Ejaka. please can we welcome her to this um, evening's broadcast and to aging with guest page so Oluchi, click on the like button click on the follow button and like and follow my page so that you can be getting notifications of when we go live and kindly go down the page there are a lot that you will need to watch the videos are fantastic i'm not saying it because i did it try to watch the one on arthritis if you have people who need help on arthritis also watch the one on menopause if you have people who need help on menopause hello good afternoon diane diane boswell good afternoon yes i'm good and how are you i'm good <laughs> i'm very very good oh diane is watching from uk you're welcome from uk if my boy is also from uk hello aluchi you're welcome all right um if former is asking if gaviscon is good for ulcer it's an a sudden relief from the pain of ulcer you know usually it's given to relieve the pain of ulcer for the moment but like i always tell us natural remedies are the best you can take your gaviscon you find out that if you don't prevent what causes that ulcer what brings that ulcer if you don't stop it you will just become addictive you will become a whatever to gaviscon which means you always take it to relieve the pain and things like that. So, you know, some acidic food can also make ulcers worse. As can physical stress, such as stress from serious injury or serious infection. When we are talking about physiological stress, when you have some kind of infection or injury, it can actually bring stress that can cause stress ulcer and make it worse for you. You know? Um, this can also be because of stress increased stomach acid because when the body is going through stress the body releases more acid you know to be able to cope with it and then that could also cause some kind of stomach um, ulcers so stress ulcers can be actually life-threatening remember it's different from peptic ulcer that i say comes on gradually it can be actually life-threatening you know and then um, because they tend to affect very sick people stress ulcer actually has affect people who are already sick people who, are, who already have one kind of ailment or the other so why stomach ulcer that are made worse by stress are very very serious you know so stomach ulcer people just take um like if he asks them you know gavis come they take antacid you know and then some people go on some supplements and they are okay for the moment all right so but um if it's stress ulcer stress ulcer is very life-threatening because it happens to people who are already sick who already have one kind of ailment or the other you know the stomach naturally produces acids to help digest food we need to understand this 
For your food to digest, the stomach produces acid that will help your food to digest. So when the stomach acid environment changes or becomes too acidic, a person may now develop symptoms of an ulcer. That's what happens. Excessive acid. Excessive stomach acid. You know, in people under severe physiological stress, ulcer may also result from changes in the body's pH. The whole body, when the pH of the body changes, then, you know, those people can also have one kind of ulcer or the other. And then again, that's why, you know, I've talked about helicobacter, uh, bacter pylori, H. pylori, which is an infection that increases the risk of all forms of ulcer, including stress ulcer. H. pylori can increase gastric ulcer, peptic ulcer, um, cornell ulcer, all stress ulcer, all forms of ulcer. And that's why it's very, very good for one to actually be away and off H. pylori. You know, um, really very significant psychological stress can trigger a stress ulcer. For example, there was a study that was done in 2018 and the details of the treatment of an ulcer in a in toddlers you know and the ulcer appeared after that toddler had refused to go to the daycare for one month so the doctor speculates that the stress probably caused the ulcer you know so sometimes some of these um, psychological stress physiological stress can actually cause some kind of ulcers for some people hello lola and you're welcome to this evening's broadcast welcome 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 Let's keep welcoming those who are joining us for, for the first time. Certain health and lifestyle factors actually can also increase the risk of damage to the stomach and intestinal lining. Some kind of health, if one is very unhealthy or having one kind of um, health challenge and they are taking some kinds of medication, so I'm going through some kinds of trauma and then some lifestyle factors. There are some of us that... <laughs> Hey, I'm going to be sharing some of those lifestyles um, as we go on to the remedies and prevention. But some of us, we are just careless with our body. We're just careless with our system. We're just careless. We just, you know, feel that we are still young, especially for those of us who have reached our middle age. You are still eating and behaving as if you are 20 years and 18 years. <laughs> you need to, <laughs> how do I say, you need to be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. I know that you're no more as young as you were. Hello, Bumi Ade Biba. You're welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, Ebele Chima. Welcome, Mukechia Madam. Eh, you're welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So, also, like I said, H. pylori infection can cause ulcer. It's part of the causes of ulcer. Lifestyle, some kind of um, careless lifestyle factors can increase the risk of damage to the stomach wall lining and these factors may also more likely than you know not for somebody who is relieving healthy develop an ulcer including stress related ulcers you know also like i've always said the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs you know such as ibuprofen can also cause ulcer in people facing serious injuries or health emergencies a history of ulcer may also increase the risk of stress ulcer if the person already had a history of ulcer. So when we talk about the physical stress, the physiological stress, it can come in various ways like serious long-term illness. If somebody has been ill for a long time, like I said, it can um, cause ulcer because of the drugs the person is taking, because of the physiological stress, because of the psychological stress the person is going through. Then some surgical procedures can also, you know, be a, can cause ulcer for some people when they have gone through such surgical pro procedures. Yes, if you, yes, yes, stress. If you're, if you're going through some kind of stress, physiological stress, it can actually cause stress ulcer and also increase ulcers for patients then trauma that occurs in the brain or the body when somebody goes through some kind of brain trauma it can also cause um stress ulcer or serious bones when people have very serious bones it can also cause stress ulcer then injury in the nervous system the central nervous system can also cause stress ulcer and then a serious long term injury usually require hospitalization like people who um, have um, some kind of injury that they need to go to the hospital to be treated and they stay on the hospital bed all those trauma 
can also cause um, stress ulcer. And some, something that causes you to be, be in the intensive care unit. You know, sometimes some people have one kind of um, sickness that will make them to be rushed to the hospital. When that adrenaline and, you know, the, the acid is pushed fast into the stomach at that very, very intense period, very, very traumatic period, it can actually make the person to develop sudden ulcers. Hello, Joyce. Joyce Conte, good evening. Ah, thanks for your time too, for joining me live today. Hello, Shida. I hope I pronounced your name well. Um, Bahol, watching from Botswana. Hello, welcome from Botswana. Let's welcome Bahol from Botswana. Gloria, you're welcome. Oh, thank you for being here. I'm happy to see you here also. Olushe, you good evening. You're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Shegulolo is telling you don't to forget. Don't forget YouTube. Have you sent them to YouTube? Yes, I've sent them. They send the recent Osa, Osa um, mm -hmm. videos. Two weeks ago, I sent them. Okay, so please send. Okay, and uh, I'm even talking to Mr. Shegu now for you. <laughs> I'm telling him not to forget you in YouTube. So he said he has sent so many videos to the YouTube and that these last two weeks on, he's going to be doing them next week, okay? So all the videos on Osa, he's going to be doing them next week. Hello, Top E from Jamaica. You're welcome, 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 Shero Top e. I hope I pronounced your name well. Watching from Jamaica, you're welcome. So today we're looking at stress ulcers, the symptoms, the prevention, the um, causes, and the treatment. So we have looked at what it is. We've looked at what brings it, you know, what causes it. We are going into the symptoms now. We are going into the symptoms of stress ulcer. Hello, IJ Chidex. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so symptoms of a stress ulcer could include pain in the upper stomach, you know, close to your diaphragm. You, you, you can have pain there. And remember, this is stress ulcer. When I talked about gastric ulcer and I talked about um, stomach ulcer, I did a video for you on exercises you can do to quickly relieve yourself if you're having some kind of acid reflux or some kind of um, gas, you know, um, stored in your system. It is because I touched my diaphragm, I remember that video. So you can go down my page and watch that video. If you put exercise for acid reflux, you will get it. It will actually show you how if you're having um, pains, if you're having heartburn, if you're having gas, and you need sudden relief without, maybe there is no gavicon, gaviscon around you or antacid around you for you to use. You can quickly do that exercise to come off it. So you have um, symptoms of stress ulcer, pain in your upper stomach, then pain that gets better or worse with food. You know, sometimes some people will say when they have ulcer and they eat food, they get better. That's part of the symptom. Sometimes you eat food and it gets worse. That's part of the symptom. So it's either way, it just depends on who it is. Then feeling bloated or unusually full. You just feel bloated, constipated, you know, or unusually full. That's another symptom of ulcer. Oh, the videos are in the Facebook. Oh, eh, no. The videos are in the Facebook. If you go down my page, just enter my page, Aging with Grace page, you will still see the video of last year. If that's why you're looking for YouTube, but we'll post them on the YouTube. But the video of last year is still on the, is still on Facebook, okay? They are still all there. So another, like I said, is feeling bloated and unusually full. And then sometimes you feel nauseatic and sometimes the people vomit. People will have stress also. And then they also um, will have symptoms of anemia, such as shortness of breath and pale skin. If one is having stress also person can have symptoms of anemia like pale skin and shortness of breath. Hello, Fola Kemi Iloebe. Wow, long time, ma. You're welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> it's been a while, ma. How are you? How is um, your family? All right. So some other symptoms of um, stress also include, you know, um, bleeding, causing dangerous loss of blood. Some people bleed when they have um, stress ulcer, especially those that it has actually eaten the stomach lining very well. And then if somebody is having this kind of bleeding, symptoms of rapidly bleeding ulcer would include 
if you're having that bleeding ulcer then you will have symptoms like this red vomit or vomit that resembles coffee grounds like as if it's um, a little darkish like coffee and then the person can also have red or maroon ball movements when you go to the toilet your toilet will be red or maroon in color and then the person can also have very dark terrible movements or feeling lightheaded the person will be feeling as if the person is fainting all these are st all the symptoms of um stress ulcer and very very serious ulcer hello shiro Toffee. okay does stress ulcer cause lump like sensation in the throat um no that might be throat ulcer we also have throat ulcers <laughs> Hey, maybe on Monday, I'll round up with all the remaining ulcers. <laughs> I'll just lump them together and give us a brief rundown on them. Because from next month, July, we're going to be handling diabetes. We're going to be handling type 1, type 2 diabetes, blood sugar. All you need to do to control them. All you need to do to prevent them. All you need to do if you're losing weight, what do you do if you're adding weight? Because it could be any of the two. Or if your diabetes is coming from overweight, what do you do? Or if you're already losing weight when you have diabetes. So July is for diabetes. So by Monday, we're going to try as much as possible to finish all we can concerning ulcer. And then we're going to be launching our ulcer book on Thursday next week. A week today. You know, because the book would have been ready. So you can now buy the book and read up whatever you need to read up. Usually my book are ebooks, which you can download on your phone so that you can have it as like a guide beside you each time you need to look at it. So on Thursday next week, we are going to be launching the book on Ulsa. You can book down ahead of time. I will give those who book down ahead of time some kind of discount. The book is supposed to be 4,000 Naira. But if you book down ahead of time, I tell you, you get it for one five. But those who buy on that day, they are going to buy it for 2,500. That's how we'll do it. So the book on Ulcer is going to come out on Friday, on Thursday. All right, so that we can, you know, quickly round off for this month and go over to diabetes. It's because um, someone asked, does stress ulcer cause lump like sensation in the throat? And I said there are also um, throat ulcer, mouth ulcer, we treated eye ulcer, we treated leg ulcer, gastric ulcer, you know, upper the underneath ulcer, and all that. All right. Hello, Rita. Dejo, you're welcome. Welcome. Uh -uh, you're still waiting for your arthritis ebook. Uh -uh, if he, sure, please chat me immediately once we are through. Let me send your book now. Is there? People have been buying their book. The arthritis ebook is supposed to be two five, but I gave it for one five. You know, for my fans, those who are not my fans, when they ask for it, they buy it for two five. But those who are fans of Aging with Grace, I sell it to you at one thousand five hundred. And like I said, very soon we'll have the VIP section. All right, so let's quickly look at six signs of stress ulcer. The six most important signs you will use to know if you're having stress ulcer. You know, the most concerning sign of stress ulcer is coughing or vomiting blood. As it indicates that the erosion of the stomach wall has gone very bad. So when somebody is having very serious stress ulcer, the person will be vomiting, the person will be, you know, um, vomiting blood and the person will be coughing. Then another sign could include dark stools, like I've said, as a result of blood that has processed through the digestive tract and is now being excreted in the stool, more formally known as melena. You know, so that's the second sign of stress ulcer, vomiting and coughing blood, stooling blood because of the intestine that has been damaged so much and then it's coming out. Hello, Ruth Koyan. Yes, mouth ulcer can cause mouth odor. Ruth, mouth ulcer would actually cause mouth odor. And sometimes some kind of um, upper um, intestinal duodenum ulcer can also cause mouth odor because you know the 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 breath comes sometimes from inside not from the mouth like when you take your breath your breath can come from inside and that's why when i'm treating um when i'm recommending supplements for people that are having bad breath i always recommend aloe vera gel to them it's always part of what i recommend and then our aloe tooth gel that has propolis our aloe tooth gel 
that has can i have aloe tooth gel our aloe tooth gel that has propolis i always recommend it because the propolis will help to and the um, B propolis and the aloe vera in the tooth gel we help to heal the mouth ulcer and then the aloe vera gel we go inside and actually also heal from inside out i'm answering ruth's question ruth says does ulcer cause mouth odor and i'm trying to describe to her that yes mouth ulcer can cause mouth odor and then upper intestinal ulcer even um intestinal ulcer stomach ulcer can also cause mouth odor because when one is um, breathing sometimes your breath comes from inside out right from deep inside you know to come out hello uni so yeah you're welcome welcome to this evening's broadcast if he's asking can constipation cause ulcer well um if the constipation is due to some kind of food that is not being digested and the food is eroding er, now causes erosion er, erosion of your of your the stomach lining it can cause ulcer but not that you know constipation on its own can cause ulcer but when the food stays in your stomach and that's why i tell people if you eat three times you're supposed to go to the toilet at least twice but in fact you're supposed to go to the toilet three times if you eat three times you're supposed to go to the toilet three times so when you're not um, going to the toilet as much as you're eating, you're actually having your colon being um, packed full of debt, being packed full of debris. Imagine, if I'm just answering you, especially for those of you who live abroad, and you have the council people that will have to come to pack your debt and pack your trash out from the street. Imagine everybody on your street, if he throws their trash out and the councilmen will not come for one month. There was a time something like that happened in Lagos when they used to tell people to throw their trash on the streets. And these council people did not come for one month. You needed to have seen how the street was. Everywhere was, was oozing with some very, very stinky smell. And there, the odor was terrible, you know. <laughs> it was really terrible. So imagine some people's stomach being like that. Just because they are not detoxifying. Just because they are not cleansing. Just because they are not eating well enough for them to go to toilet all the time please i want to sound this warning to us if you are not going to the toilet and you're being constipated fields of green aloe vera gel should be your partner you know i used to i used to tell people that i also had this issue before if you go to my toilet you will see you know all this um, poster that they do and keep i put them um, god is in control <laughs> God will help you. Because each time I sit down, it is prayer that will make me go to toilet. Sometimes two days I've not gone to toilet. But this is me. Sometimes I go to toilet three times. In fact, today I've gone like two times. I've gone early in the morning when I woke up. And then later in the day when I took my breakfast. After my breakfast, I've gone to toilet. You know, so God has healed me. And why? Because I'm now taking care of my lifestyle. I'm now taking care of my diet. I'm now taking care of my bodies. And some of the things that help me, fields of green, aloe vera gel, you know, to stay away from those bloating, those constipation. If you saw, I hope I've answered your question. When you allow your stomach to have a lot of debris, of course, it can cause erosion of the lining, a lot of acid. Someone is asking, um, can ulcer cause a constant pain? Yes, ulcer can. When the lining of the stomach is already eroded and it, there's injury and there's further infection, of course, it can. Some of them say, if you go to the stomach to see what is happening to some people's stomach, that's why, let me tell us, that's why sometimes the doctors have to cut off. They will say it's now an operation case. So they have to cut off and join the intestine. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, okay, you want, um, can you have my personal number? Please put my number on the screen. My number on the screen is my personal number. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to take care of your health. So someone asked about mouth odor. These three products are, will help remove mouth odor. Okay, fields of green, aloe vera gel, and bright tooth gel. These three products will really take care of mouth odor especially if the odor is because of ulcer okay 
So the bright tooth gel will help with the mouth ulcer. This is one miracle for mouth ulcers. This tooth gel is fantastic. It has aloe babadensi leaf juice, stabilized aloe vera gel. It also has um, bee propolis, natural bee propolis, which also will help to make sure that you, your mouth is kept away from infection. And then your fields of green will give you all the green you need. And of course, I always tell us that aloe vera gel has sapolene that can also help with cleansing. Now we're looking at the C symptoms. Please <laughs> let me know the real. The, I'm starting from the most dangerous one. And I say the first sign of stress ulcer is coughing or vomiting blood, which indicates erosion of the stomach wall and showing that it has gone very bad. And then another sign is dark stools as a result of blood that has been processed through the digestive tract and is now being excreted in your stool, which I say is melanin. And then the third sign is bloating. The person will be bloating. And then the fourth sign is abdominal pain, serious abdominal pain. And then the fifth sign is heartburn. And then another thing that could even happen when someone is having intense stress ulcer is weight loss. The person will begin to lose weight, you know, without having appetite for food. The person will be losing weight without actually, no matter how much the person is eating, and the person will also be losing appetite, the person will just be losing weight. So those are the six signs you need to watch out for. Hello, Marianne Eteng, you are just coming back. Okay, you're welcome, 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 welcome. Oh, somebody is having house tool in menopause. Yes, you know, usually for people in menopause, lack of estrogen can cause a lot. You know, um, erratic um and reduction of estrogen and progesterone can actually cause a loss so if you're having heart to please go on aloe vera gel and fields of green that will help you good evening bridget bassi you're welcome Oluchi, you're asking can also cause women not to be pregnant <laughs> it's not even only just not to be pregnant you know when <laughs> pregnancy is not just automatic yeah, you know it's also psychological if somebody is having extreme ulcer or especially when the stomach is full, it, it can delay conception. And that's why usually when we want to, if people are having, are still young and they're having serious um, conception issue, one of the things we normally prescribe for the people is our clean nine detox. We want first of all for the person to do the clean nine detox so that the person can detoxify the whole system for us to be able to be sure that, okay, this thing is not a matter of one kind of um, intestinal or diet or issue that the person is having. So it could be, but not primarily. I cannot say it's direct, but some kind of ulcer can ha make a woman to have delayed conception. Psychological, physiological, like we said, you know, all, when the body is going through all such trauma, the body might not be able to release or accept the sperm the way it needs to. So it can also cause delayed pregnancy. All right. Hello, Anne. And you're welcome to this evening's broadcast. Yeah. So we're looking at the prevention now. We are now at the prevention. So I want to start by what you can do for yourself when we're talking about prevention. You know, normal life, we all know, is stressful enough. <laughs> but particularly during this crisis, economical crisis system, we're just coming, it's like post-COVID for some nations. And some nations are still in the coronavirus pandemic. You know, some is post-COVID. All the effects of staying away from business, of being, you know, um, inside the homes and um, lockdown and things like that. But life itself, generally, is even so stressful. And that's why, for those of us who are pastors, when people come to church, let's not, you know, overburden them. <laughs> with more stress and that's why when i go to church i don't even look at anybody i dance away if you see me here i dance i don't mind who is at my right because that is the time to relieve tension but you can do all this on your own at home when you wake up in the morning please meditate do what i call life of gratitude a gratitude session thank god for waking you up i do that every morning father ah thank you that you have made me to see the sun again today there are some people who slept and didn't wake up. That attitude of gratitude, having that mindful gratitude, you need to wake up from it. Mindfulness, 
of gratitude, you know, and then practice it every morning. Practice it before you sleep. It will actually go a long way. Also, you can also practice the breath taking. I always tell people, when you're under tension, just cool it, cool it, cool it, cool it. Take it easy. Take it cool. Take that deep breath. Take that, um, you know, and just find the time away and feel good. You know, these practices don't have to be complicated or take you a long time. Even five minutes a day of mindful focus on your God and the good things he has done for you. The Bible says, count your blessings, name them one by one, and you will see what the Lord has done for you. Take five minutes in the morning, thank God for what he has done for you. Take five minutes in the night before you sleep, thank God for what he has done for you. And any time you're passing through tension, stress, get away one minute two minutes will do the magic take your deep breath <gasps> and let worry stay you know i always tell people hello alaide hola deji welcome to this evening's broadcast welcome christiana divya you know i always tell people you know that life is not that bad though. it's not that stressful it's not that so complicated and then more so you don't have to kill yourself for something hey, hey no man is indispensable let me tell you here when you die today no matter whom that person is in that office they will continue without you let's bet <laughs> how did they bet again i've forgotten how they bet how did they bet again is it like this i've forgotten how they bet oh. <laughs> let's bet they will continue in that office. That office, you're breaking your head and thinking that without you, it will not go. There we go. Even in your home, you'll be stressing yourself so much for those children. If you drop today, those children will make it. You know, they will make it. So you need to be careful. Don't overstress yourself. You know, try not to increase your stress so that you won't have stress also and some other diseases that would come. We are looking at prevention now. And number one, I've said meditation and mindfulness. Take it easy. Take it cool. My husband has one song like that. Take it easy. Take it cool. Take it easy. Take it cool. Take it cool. Take it cool. <laughs> so take it cool, my dear. Take it cool. Then another prevention method is physical increasing your physical activity like you need your routine exercises it will help to release the natural endorphins that's the hormones that actually may reduce stress exercising can help you reduce stress not over exercising and that's why i advocate i'm an advocate for fitness ball because fitness ball is one um, exercise tool that is cheap affordable accessible easy to carry easy to use and that will not make you overstress yourself when you're exercising so you don't need stressful exercises but modest exercises can make the difference i'm telling you it can make the difference so always set reasonable goals for your exercising and make sure you do your exercises then prevention number three get enough sleep make sleep a priority i was discussing with my husband yesterday about sleep you know night sleep is very very important for you if you sleep well during the night and you wake up during the day you're strong you're fresh you're refreshed you're even you're strong your memory everything is good about you so sleep is very important if you're having sleep problem please make sure you handle it Blossom tea is my, what do I call it? My remedy for sleepless nights. My remedy for bad sleep. My remedy for people who are not sleeping deeply. Blossom tea is fantastic. It will help you sleep well. It will help you sleep deeply. It will help you wake up refreshed and not drowsy during the day. It's very, very adaptogenic and it's a herbal tea made from 13 different fruits and vegetables. It's fantastic. So Blossom Tea will help you sleep effectively and sleep very well. All right. Hello, Marianne Etenk. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what is 100% truth, but whatever it is. And Lolo, I don't know, but whatever it is. <laughs> Mary Odushola, you're welcome. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mrs. Balogu from Kutunu. How are you? How was your trip back? 
Okay, Mrs. Balogun from Kutunu. She's my new downline. Oh, let's welcome her. <laughs> Very soon, you two will be helping millions of women all over in Jesus' name. How was your trip back? She came all the way from Kutunu to come and sign up herself and sponsor herself under me in Nigeria. I was not even there. They just called, they kept calling me from the office. Mr. Choma, Mr. Choma, I was like, ah, what is this? What is this now? And they then told me, you have someone from Kotonu here. How was your trip? Thank you for believing in me, traveling all the way from Kotonu to come and sponsor yourself under me. Thank you, Mrs. Balogun. God bless you. All right. So I said, another prevention is getting good sleep. If you get good sleep, it will help prevent stress also. And then seek professional help. Please, let's stop self-medication. You know, I talked with um, some people yesterday and we, we counted like four people who were going through serious issues of typhoid and malaria and they were having um, home remedies. They were having, um, not home remedies, they were having, what do they call it? Self-medication. They went to the chemist, bought drugs by themselves. In fact, one went to the lab. <laughs> it's so funny. Some people can be funny. <laughs> they now, the most important person was what that person cut off. The person went to the lab, did test, asked the lab man to tell him what the test was. Went to the pharmacy, I became his, bought the drugs, and started taking the drugs, and left the doctor who is supposed to recommend tests and recommend the medicine to him. You know, he just did it himself. After one week, he found out he was not getting good. He went back to the pharmacy, changed the medicine. Can you imagine? Until he was rushed to the hospital. And I, I was speaking with a friend yesterday. The same thing happened to her, you know, people around her. Let's stop self-medication. It's important to seek treatment from a professionally trained doctor to provide you with what you need. Then you can now come back after being, you know, receiving that treatment, lifestyle change and some supplements that can help Cushion the effect of the drugs you're taking, if you need to take drugs, or lifestyle change and some supplements that can prevent, help you manage those things without having extra complication for you. Alright, so if you're struggling with stress, reach out to people who can help you, your pastor, your medical doctors, your friends, you know, that can provide advices for you. Reach out to me, my number is on the screen and it's already pinned. I will also help you if you're going through stress. All right, prevention, eliminate unhealthy habits. That's another preventive measure. Eliminate unhealthy habits. Smoking and consuming excessive amount of alcohol can add stress to your body. It can actually add stress to your body. Yeah, if he is one fan of blossom tea, she's already showing us her cup of blossom tea. Ah, if it is blossom tea, it has done wonders for me. <laughs> I sleep like a baby now. I don't take it that frequently again, you know, but there was a time that I needed this to sleep. But now my body has adjusted. I sleep very well. So, but I still enjoy the aroma. This tea is fantastic. So, <laughs> I still take it from time to time. So, smoking and consuming excess amount of alcohol will add stress to your body. No, many people rely on smoking and taking alcohol as a, cop a coping mechanism. But this to often make stress worse so do your best to kick out at least and reduce some of these bad habits it will be good for you all right so improve your diet you know as the saying goes you are what you eat then diet is a particularly important aspect of putting up the puzzle of your health especially when it comes to peptic ulcer you know um diet is very very important certain foods may trigger or even make the symptoms of ulcer worse so think about what you're eating and how it may affect how you feel and that's why i always tell us let your body speak to you when your body speaks to you obey your body and do what your body is telling you so that you will be healthy okay then another preventive measure is to improve on your diet as we are saying avoid foods that may trigger heartburn or acid reflux symptoms such foods as tomatoes, when you have tomato-based food, if you're having stress ulcer, please stay away from tomato-based food. Stay away from citrus-based items. Stay away from spicy food and fatty food. Stay away from coffee and caffeine. These items, not that they cause ulcer, but avoiding them, you know, will help you to, you know, remove the symptoms of ulcer and taking them can actually increase the symptoms of ulcer for you. 
Thank you for last day. Thank you for last day, Tasca. Thank you, thank you. She's saying well done to me. Thank you. Then another preventive measure is for you to reduce your weight, drop your weight. We just finished um was it not yesterday, 22nd? We just finished um uh weight loss program, international weight loss program, and we had a lot of people there, you know, love it was there. Um, I don't remember all the names of the people now. They are going out of my head. Bolale was there from Ireland. Uh, or was it UK? Uh -huh. Then I think Mary was there from Ireland. We had from um, Love Vet is still having her own. A lot of people from all over Nigeria that were engaging with Grace in that team. It was a fantastic team. So what we did was our clean night program for nine days. We had medical doctors, experts from all over the world that trained us in that clean nine, nine days. I remember, of course, a lot of you enjoyed it because I had a promo on C9. But today, I'm extending that promo just for today because I have, I think, just one pack. I think I have just one, one or two packs of C9 remaining that I want to give away at still that price. You will still get it with your one aloe vera gel. You still get it with your fast break. This all of them are supposed to be like seventy thousand, but I gave it away for forty three thousand. So if you're buying the cost of ulcer, you need to drop your weight, or you just need to drop your weight. If you're buying C nine today, I'll still give it to you at that forty three thousand. It's a giveaway price. So weight loss reduces pressure on the abdominal area which in turn can reduce symptoms of heartburn and reflux for you. So losing weight, of course, isn't easy, but even a small reduction in your body weight can lead to improvement of stomach ulcer, I'm telling you, because of the weight on it. So one of the things you need to do is that you must lose weight, okay? You need to lose weight. Um, Tin tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, tomato-based food can cause it and remember, some of this thing is not generalized so much. Um, it's not particularly that it must happen to everybody. There might be one or two people that might escape it. Okay, I'm trying to answer Bumi's question. So you just check your body. If tomatoes is part of it or is not part of it, you will know. And then you stop it. But generally, it happens to many people. Oh, Oluchi said, what are the food that also person need to be using? Oluchi, my book on ulcer is coming out next week, Thursday, and all these foods will be there. Because today we are treating stress ulcer. We, are, we have only seven minutes to the end of this broadcast, so I will not be able to go through all that. Um, book for the book and buy the book when it's out, okay? All right, Shiro Toffee said, thank you for the tips. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, thank you. She said, I'm a pleasant lady. Thank you. Thank you. All, all right. So lose weight and then we are going to the remedies because we need to. Wow. I still have a lot of time. We need to end soon in seven minutes time. So remedies. How do you um, treat ulcer? How do you natural remedies for ulcer? Number one is stress management. Managing stress will be very helpful in your treatment of your ulcers. There are some evidences from the studies that have been done that reducing stress can actually help treat ulcer so stress is actually believed to limit the function of your immune system when you're going through a lot of stress your immune system will not work very well so stress, man stress management will help your overall well-being so please manage your stress then number two natural remedies for um ulcers all forms of ulcer is aloe vera gel aloe vera gel it's one of the home remedies. If you have aloe vera gel, I use it a lot for people when they are having ulcers and they just take a glass or have the glass of aloe vera gel, they are on their way of being, you know, um, very, very healthy. Of course, it's, uh, it has over 210 um, properties and nutrients that can help you. It has sapolin, you know, aloe vera gel that can help. It also has healing power. It can help. Aloe vera gel is known to be an antibacterial and a skin healing property. And that's why it's very, very good for the intestine. Especially for those who already have their, their intestine wall eroded. Aloe vera gel can actually help. Several studies already show aloe vera gel to be very, very effective. You can go and even Google it for stomach ulcer. So get your bottle. It's going on 20% discount just for those who are here so you can chat me 
and you'll get your aloe vera gel at 20% discount. All right, then another remedy is honey. Honey, it is quite funny that honey is being appreciated for its sweetness instead of the numerous health benefits that come from consuming honey. You know, studies have shown that honey can contain up to 200 elements, including polyphenols and other antioxidants. And you know, our aloe vera, our forever honey, it's cold pressed honey. It did not go through any cooking. It did not go through any heat. This is just harvested from the bee honey naturally as they are producing it, you see, inside this bottle. Very, very healthy for you. You know, honey has also been confirmed to have powerful antibacterial, you know, that can inhibit H. pylori growth. So if your ulcer is caused by H. pylori, take forever honey. Keep taking it constantly. In fact, I have someone I placed on it and she's already giving testimony. She's taking it for like two weeks now. On this honey, you just take um, a spoon of honey in the morning. You just swallow your honey. And then as long as you, you have normal blood sugar level, you can enjoy honey as you would, as your sweetener in your tea, as your sweetener in your cereals, in your pap, you know. And that can also help to soothe your ulcer. Honey, another thing that you may also need, it's garlic. Garlic, you know, is very, very good. It's, 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 it's a plant that um, has a variety of medicinal things they can do. It has also been used for treatment of several illness in the past. And forever garlic is very, very good. We have our garlic thyme. This our garlic thyme is coated in a way that you will not um, perceive the garlic when you're taking it. That's why I love it a lot. You know, one of the disadvantages of taking garlic is that when you take garlic, you to, you to begin to smell everywhere you go. But our forever garlic time will not smell. So, like honey, it has also been shown that garlic extract inhibits H. pylori growth. This one, they did medical research on it. So usually for people who have ulcers, I recommend garlic thyme also for them. It will help inhibit the growth of H. pylori. And then they will also be very, very okay. Another um, thing that can also help ulcer if you're having ulcer is probiotics. Probiotics like an active pro -B. It can also help reduce the bad bacteria in your system and increase the good bacteria in your system. Very, very good for stomach ulcer, anyone that is having stress ulcer or any form of stomach ulcer, any form of colon issues, constipation, um, if the person is also having diarrhea or the person is having stored up things in the stomach, you know, this can also help. And then, of course, we talked about our A better care. A better care that has a lot of vitamin A and vitamin E, especially if it's our food for the eye. What I'm holding here is the food for the eye. If you're having dryness of eye, wet, uh, watery eye, glycoma, cataracts, or you need to make your eye be in health, a beta care is the food for your eye. And of course, you know that I did a promo last, I think it was on Thursday last week. And um, on Monday, the promo is extended just for today also for you. 40% discount on a beta care. So take that opportunity and get your abeta care. Now, another remedy for ulcer is banana. Studies have shown that when it comes to ulcer treatment, both ripe and unripe banana can be very effective. And this is because like honey and like garlic, there are certain antibacterial compounds in banana that can also inhibit the growth of ulcer causing H. pylori. And you know, however, if, if you're a treat um on ulcer with banana if you're treating ulcer with banana then you need to eat at least three ripe banana every day you can also peel two or three bananas and cut them into thin slices you know and then they dry the sliced banana in the sun and then grind it into a fine powder mix it together with like two tablespoons of honey and then take the mixture three times a day for about one week that can also help you so you can get your banana, dry it, and then you grind it into powder, and then you mix it with honey, natural honey, that is not um, honey that is already dead. Remember, why honey? Because honey 
will also help to inhibit H. pylori. Garlic will also help to inhibit H. pylori. You can actually mix the three together, garlic, honey, and your dried banana, and then you take it like for three times a day for like a week to help also do it. Now, I didn't look at us because I wanted to rush through uh, what I prepared for us. Um, all right, I think, um, good evening, Fatima, Obewi. How was my day? Very good. Oh, you just returned from work. Okay, Fatima, you can watch the replay. Grace David, you're welcome to this evening's broadcast. Thank you for thanking me, EJ Duru. Vera Chikweze, you're welcome. All right, I think I've taken all our questions because I was answering the questions as I was going through and my time is up. So if you ask me, what are the combinations if I'm trying to give you supplements for that can help you prevent ulcer, that can help you manage ulcer, that can help you, your system to go through, you know, that healing process from ulcer, I will say number one is aloe vera gel and then your active pro b and then you can have your fields of green okay if you have these three and of course if your blood sugar is okay you can add your honey so but these three aloe vera gel b propolis garlic thyme and then your I don't have a very large hand. <laughs> we will manage today. All right. So your your this four will help you very well. And I will give you this four for 20% discount for today. Just to help with those who need to get their products for ulcer healing. Okay? This four will go on 20% discount for today. And then if your blood sugar is okay, you can add honey to what you need. Thank you for joining me today. I think I've answered all our questions. Okay, Sheryl is saying, what's the best natural treatment for mouth ulcer? Okay, I've already talked about it. The best natural tre treatment I have for mouth ulcer is your tooth gel, right tooth gel, aloe vera gel. Okay, these two, very, very important. And then you can add your fields of green for mouth ulcer. These three are what I recommend for mouth ulcer. All right. I think I've answered all the questions. Thank you for joining me again today. All the products on ulcer are still on 20% discount. All the products on ulcer are still on 20% discount. And um, your A Better Care still on 40% discount. The best. It will soon finish you. I bought a certain number. Once it's true, that is it. And then... All also products on 20% discount. See you on Saturday as we take our exercises. And on Monday as we round up all our um, theme for ulcer. And then next week, Thursday, we launch our ulcer book. So book yours ahead of time. Thank you for joining me. Bye. Love you. Bye.